difficult to remove from environmental surfaces. So it's associated with um, outbreaks in places like cruise ships where you've got a whole bunch of people together and it can just spread very quickly. Um, it can also happen in daycare centers, that's another reason it just spreads really quickly, schools, and certainly residence halls are another place where we can see it spread very quickly or sorority houses or even places where you've got 10 or 11 people living together. So it's a really common thing, um, and we, you know, whenever we ha see a few cases, we quickly work to, um, we've got protocols developed, for example, with housing staff about um, cleaning recommendations, really getting in very quickly, trying to stop the spread before it becomes more widespread. But other common things we've had, um, we continue to work on flu preparedness. Um, there's been mumps outbreaks on college campuses. Um, you know, certainly cases of meningococcal meningitis are always a concern. So it's a pretty regular part of um, managing the health of a population that lives in a relatively closed environment. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm wondering what healthcare services are most used by students um, at UHS and what services does UHS offer that are maybe underutilized by students? So the most common services we provide are the primary care services, which are just sort of, and primary care can range from, um, you know, being someone who's sick or someone who just needs a general physical. So it's illnesses, colds, flus, monos, brain strains, those sorts of things. Um, very common students need services for those things. Um, the other really more popular ones include flu shots. Um, we do about, I think this year we did about 9,500 flu shots, so really trying to promote that. And then also women's health services. So for ant, you know birth control prescriptions, um, STI testing, um, just other sexual health questions, those are very commonly used. Mm -hmm. um, the, and then, our, of course, our mental health services, counseling and crisis are also used. We, have a, we serve about right around 3,500 students a year in, in those mental health services, and then about 25, 26,000 a year in our medical services. Okay. Um, um, less utilized services include, um, some things I might promote to people include our wellness services. So students can come in and have an individual wellness consultation to kind of review their nutrition, physical activity, um, try to, to kind of just want to promote their wellness. Um, so that's a service I might mention that students should consider doing. That sounds interesting. Um, UHS is celebrating its 100th birthday mm -hmm. or anniversary mm -hmm. soon, and so I'm wondering um, if there are any plans to celebrate that milestone and what UHS is doing for that. We are actually, and we'll probably um, look for the, probably at the beginning of spring semester, there'll be a lot more coming out about it. Um, we are celebrating it for a couple of reasons. One is um, we think it's important for our staff and, our, and the people we've served to celebrate it because it's, you know, it's kind of a big deal. Yeah. Um, two is we're, we really use it as an opportunity to promote what we do, um, and we're going to be using a lot of wellness themes as part of the UL initiative in our centennial celebration, so to use it really as an opportunity to get messages out on campus about wellness. Um, What's interesting, I think, about the centennial is there's some really interesting, uh, a really interesting book that was recently written about the, the history of college health services and, and why they started and, and their origins. Um, and most of them, their origins were around the turn of the century um, because of outbreaks of illness, uh, both typhoid, um, and that was the origin on this campus, as well as um, the 1918 influenza outbreak. Um, so most college health services actually have their origins in, um, in, in either pandemic or in other sort of communicable diseases. So I think what's fascinating is we really haven't changed that much about what we do. Um, um, it's really, it's about public health role, um, how do you keep a population of people healthy who are all sort of living together. Um, so we're, we're excited to kind of pull some of that history out and uh, it's interesting, like I said, that we just went through H1N1 and um, it, it, nothing, things don't change that much, I suppose. Yeah. Um, so. Um, so you've only been the, the director mm -hmm. for a couple of years, but I'm wondering um, what you feel like your biggest, biggest accomplishment has mm -hmm. been and then where you see, um, you know, what your goals are for UHS moving forward. Mm -hmm. Well, I think um, we certainly have done a lot of things. Um, we have, um, you know, I think I think I, I 
our staff has done an amazing job in, um, you know, I think our organization transformed a bit with the move from our old facility. Um, at the same time that we moved, not only did we move physically, um, but we also took undertook some efforts to um, promote our image and also to really um, be more explicit about what we offered to campus. So we've internally implemented, um, we went from paper-based records to electronic records. Um, and with that, we have a lot better data about what we do, how well we do it, um, really taking an aggressive stand of reporting out to campus. This is what we provide. This is the quality of the services that we provide. So I'm really proud of how our staff have adopted those new technologies, been able to transform what we do, and been able to successfully move um, and accommodate the demand for patients, you know, the demand for services that we're seeing. I think as we move forward, our focuses are really going to be more um, in better integrating our prevention efforts. So I think we will, that's kind of our, I think our next focus, particularly in really redoubling our efforts to address from a prevention standpoint the issues that we think really have the biggest impact on students, which are um, nutrition and obesity, mental health conditions, alcohol, um, sexual violence. Um, and so those are the areas that we're going to be focusing on um, from a prevention standpoint. Well, thank you, Dr. Van Orman. Thank you for uh, joining us today. Be sure to check out U Wellness at uwellness.journalism.wisc.edu to learn more about the health and wellness of the University of Wisconsin-Madison campus community.